Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, and today I'm doing a diagnosis on a 1993 Lincoln Town car with a 4.6 liter engine. Okay, so what are the complaints on this vehicle? The owner complains, so the owner has owned it now for about six months, the current owner, and they said that ever since they bought it, it had what I'm going to call a, a hesitating issue. So you'd give it the gas or you try to get the car to go and it would just hesitate, spit and sputter, all that other good stuff. Over the past few months, it has gradually gotten worse. And uh, so now it's to the point to where if the car is cold, it won't even go over 25 miles an hour. Interesting thing is if you allow the car to warm up a little bit, It'll go over 25 miles an hour. I was able to get it up to 35, 40, and even 50 miles an hour, but there is no get up and go in the vehicle. So in order to get it to go 40, 50 miles an hour, you have to press the pedal all the way to the floor, and it doesn't get up and go. It struggles to get up that fast. Upon startup, it has a little bit of a rough startup. Uh, it's a little hesitant to start, and it does have a little bit of a hesitant idle as well. And so uh, also while, you, while you're just sitting in park or in drive, let's say at a stoplight if you're in drive, or if you're uh, just sitting in park, it has a rough idle. If you're just sitting in park or neutral and try to rev it, the engine will not rev up either. So there's quite a few things that could cause that. It could be timing, it could be fuel, it could just need a simple tune-up. So first of all, I wanna show you how it starts and what it sounds like and some of the symptoms we have. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna check our fuel delivery system. We're gonna check our spark plugs. We may even go far as to check compression on this one. All right, so let's go ahead and get this car started so you can see how it runs. So at first glance, it doesn't look like or sound like it runs bad at all. It starts right up pretty well and uh, idles pretty well. But when you put the engine under a load is when it starts missing, sorry about that, is when it starts missing and when it starts hesitating and bogging out. Here we go. Now let's do a whoop test which is called wide open throttle. Now let's test that one more time. So you notice the backfire there, right? Well, that backfire is coming out of the top half of the engine, not out of the back of the tailpipe. So with that backfire, that makes me think that the right side of this engine is running rich. So let's go ahead just, just to eliminate it, let's check our fuel delivery system. All right, so I'm gonna go over here on the passenger side <clears throat> on this particular vehicle, 4.6 liter engine. And uh, this is, uh, you're gonna follow your fuel rail. And right here is where you're gonna find the access point to test your fuel pressure. So we're gonna test two different things here. We're gonna test fuel pressure, make sure the fuel pump and fuel filter are working correctly and that it's not starving for gas. And another thing that it could be is the fuel pressure regulator. So we're also gonna test this with our fuel pressure gauge by pulling the vacuum line off of it while it is running. Now, if this is working correctly, come on vacuum line. If this is working correctly, when you pull the vacuum line, you'll see your fuel gauge jump up. So the proper fuel pressure is gonna be around 36 PSI. And when you pull this vacuum line, if, if your fuel pressure regulator is working correctly, you'll see your fuel pressure gauge jump up. <clears throat> you can check it out and see, just using a standard fuel gauge with the Ford fitting. I had to go buy one with a Ford fitting on it, so nothing too special. And I've got another fuel pressure tester, but 
this one doesn't have the Ford fitting, so that's why I went and bought the other one. This one's a little bit more elaborate, but oh well, no big deal. So you're gonna first install your fitting, then you're gonna install your pressure tester. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the car again in preparation, in preparation for my fuel pressure test. So I've got my fuel pressure tester tapped in right here. And what I'm looking for is after startup, while it's just idling, we want about 36 pounds of pressure. And then when I remove the vacuum line off of the fuel pressure regulator, I want to watch it jump up to about 42 pounds of pressure. And that's going to tell me whether or not the fuel system on this vehicle is healthy. Uh, that'll let me know if the fuel pump is working correctly and that'll also let me know if the fuel pressure regulator is working correctly. Alright, so now that the engine is running, let's see where we are at. That's about 36 pounds of pressure, close enough to it. So that tells me that that's pretty good. So let's see what it does when I pull the fuel pressure regulator vacuum line, which is this right here. Let's go ahead and pull it. So that's pulled and now we've jumped up to about 41 42 pounds of pressure so that right there is a good indicator that you've got a healthy fuel pump you've got a healthy fuel filter and you've got a healthy fuel pressure regulator let's reattach that vacuum line and it goes back to about 32 pounds of pressure. So we don't have a fuel delivery problem. So I say it's time that we go ahead and move forward. I'm gonna get the spark plugs out. I'm gonna get my wires out. And I'm also gonna perform a compression test to see if there might be an issue with timing. However, I doubt that there is. All right, so in order to get the spark plugs out, I'm gonna have to remove my air tubing, air breather, between my throttle body and my air filter so that way I have easy access to the driver's side spark plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and get this removed by disconnecting my, my air hoses, <clears throat> my airflow sensor, and then uh, also using a flathead screwdriver to get my clips and clamps disconnected. Alright, so again, to get the air tube out of the way between the throttle body Let's get some focus back here in the air filter. I just disconnected my PCV valves here and here and uh, flathead screwdriver to get the clamps off. And now you've got a big open space. So we can go ahead and start pulling and checking spark plugs. So that's where I'm gonna go next because remember, we, we passed our fuel pressure test. And as a matter of fact, it holds pressure. So we're in good shape. We don't need to worry about the fuel delivery system. All right, folks, and there's not a whole lot involved with pulling these spark plugs. Just grab your wire, twist it a little bit. And it should come off just fine. Oh, wow. Well, there could be one of the answers right there. Time for new wires. This one just came apart completely, so make a note of that. They're just old wires. There we go. All right, so next, we're gonna use a 5 8 spark plug socket. Go ahead and get all the spark plugs loosened up. may have a problem with that one that's the one that the wire just came apart on so at the least we need a, at least one new wire might as well go ahead and change all the wires they look pretty old <clears throat> plus the coils in here they're motorcraft coils they're the original coils this car has 160,000 miles on it
Okay, so now that I got all the spark plugs loose, take my mag in here and pull them out. Now these spark plugs are in pretty decent shape. They're burnt pretty decent. They still have the electrode. So these are pretty good. I'm going to lay these in order out to the side because I want to compare them with my other spark plugs. So here's number four. Still has the electrode in pretty decent shape. And now I need to get these other ones out. Give me just a second. All right, so I need to pull the tip of this plug wire out. That's what came apart. Now I can get that spark plug out. All right, so I've got the driver and passenger side spark plugs pulled. Now if you look here, this is the driver's side. Each one is pretty burnt pretty evenly, and they each have an electrode. Let me see if I get it to zoom in there. There you go. You can see the electrode. Now remember, the backfire was coming out of the driver's side over here. I'm sorry. Passenger side, driver's side. And if you look over here, I've only got one spark plug. It's really, it's burnt. That looks like that's running rich. Okay, and then I've got three other spark plugs that have no electrode whatsoever. The electrode is completely gone. So, <clears throat> now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say this vehicle probably needs spark plugs and wires. But I want to make sure that this isn't a timing issue. So I'm so what I've gone ahead and done is I pulled my cover for my fuel pump relay. And I'm going to pull my fuel pump relay out. I'm going to disable the fuel pump. And I'm going to do a compression check on each side of the engine, all eight cylinders. And I want to see if compression is going to be consistent all the way across the board. If it is, then I'm going to say that this vehicle needs a tune-up. If it's not, then I'm gonna say I need to go further in and look and see if the timing is off on this vehicle. All right, I apologize. I didn't press play during the compression test. But what you do is you get a compression tester, you remove the fuel relay, go ahead and remove all your spark plugs, plug your compression tester, screw it in, and turn the car over until you get registered numbers. Okay, anything under 91 PSI is going to be considered a dead cylinder. You want to be in the 120 to the 150 range during the compression test. Uh, just as I suspected, compression was good throughout all eight cylinders. Now, let's say we had 91 compression in the front with 60 pounds of compression in the back this would be a live cylinder this would be a dead cylinder and the difference in numbers such a large variable would tell me that valves and pistons and stuff aren't opening and closing and moving when they're supposed to i would then probably go ahead and start looking at the timing chain but that's not the issue that i have here so again i'm thinking spark plugs wires possibly maybe even new coil packs there's two on this vehicle one here and then another here and that's because it's got 160,000 miles and it says motocraft these are the original coils so to keep it out of the shop and only have to do this one time and one time only I'd say go ahead and replace the coils the spark plugs the spark plug wires and see if we can clean the airflow sensor now I'm gonna go ahead and take this one apart and there's a reason because if this is dirty if this isn't working correctly it will produce some of the symptoms that we have like not being able to go over 25 miles per hour so this is a special torx bit it's a tamper proof so you're going to need one that has the hole in the middle there in order to get that open so i'm going to take this out and i'm willing to bet 
it's going to be dirty. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. Uh, let's see if you can see that. It is pretty dirty. Let me take this out in the sunlight where you'll be able to see it better. Just as I suspected, it's, it's really dirty. Okay, so hopefully you can see the grime that's built up on the filaments of the airflow meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it and say that airflow meter needs to be cleaned coils need to be changed out so coil here and a coil here and then also eight new spark plugs and wires spark plugs wires coils and an airflow meter cleans cleanse and i'd be willing to bet that that's what's going to take to get this car going so i'll go ahead and end this video here and i'll call the owners and let them know what i've found and let them know what I think it is and see if they want to move forward with a, what I'm going to call a major tune-up because a normal tune-up to me is just like spark plugs and wires, maybe an air filter. But I'm really going to go ahead and suggest that they change out these coils. 160,000 miles. I'd hate to put spark plugs and wires in it today and then they have to come back three months later for coils and get charged it all over again and all that other stuff. So, so that's how I'm going to play this one, folks. Uh... I really appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with me and watching my videos and supporting me. If you have any questions, just uh, get at me in the comments. I try my best to get back with you guys through email, over the phone, and video. Um, basically, whatever is easiest uh, for me to do with my workload and all that other stuff. So, uh, Once again, I greatly appreciate your support. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.